Seven years of travel with local knowledge. Julio! Figuring out the tackle for a trip like this is always a challenge. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. We're fishing out here in 30 feet of water. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. And that's the real challenge. These fish are big, they're mean, and you have to wrestle them out of the rocks and earn every single fish you get to the boat. We gotta move up and lead her. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in Just the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz, Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. When I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tuna. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. Wow. Woo Woo. That's the one! We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. You know, I feel like being a traveling fisherman is sort of a bug. Seven years of travel with local knowledge. I've been to a lot of places, a lot of places I never would have got to see if it wasn't for local knowledge. I learned really early on, if I wanted to expand my horizons, see new stuff, see new species, you had to pay attention and you had to kind of figure out where those things were biting, where the hot spots were, what the seasons were. If I were to rate all the places, in my top three, Baja is definitely one or two. There are only a few places that I could return to every single year, a couple weeks a year, that just hold a special spot in my heart. Good to see. It's been a long time. Julio! What's going on? What's up, buddy? Hey, we right. tested out the weight limit on your plane here. That's good. One of the places that I've returned to several times that has always provided, always been consistent, is right here, Abre Ojos, Baja California Sur. How far are we from uh, Aubrey from here? Um, 100 kilometers. Oh, okay. We need to make a turn, you know, so we came back. And then, and then they just had a storm yep. and then destroy a lot of the roads and stuff. So we're going to be off-roading and stuff like that. But uh, you know what? Bad conditions are good for fishing. So you, know, you guys know that. We'll so, be fine. We'll be fine. So that fish has been resting there for a couple of months now. I like resting fish. I know. So we need some adventure. Let's go do it. Abriojos and its sister city, La Bocana, are two very special places. When you ask me about this place, the first thing I'm gonna say is Old Baja. Just like we say Old Florida a lot on the show, this is what Baja used to be. The best way for me to describe Abre and Bocana, they are sleepy little fishing villages. It's just far enough out of the way to be very unique and very old and traditional, but it's close enough to get to within a day of striking distance from San Diego. You know, you're not gonna find hotels on every corner, you're gonna find little cabins, little mom and pop bungalows. If you're looking for a Costco, if you're looking for a mall, this is not the place for you. Well, we're back. Dude, what a different experience, huh? And it's just as awesome. I mean, I don't know, I'm pretty fired up for this one. No, definitely fired up. I mean, and I gotta tell you, I wouldn't trade coming down here, the first experience, that driving down with you, trailer in the boat for anything. There was no script. Oh man. Ali said we're gonna jump in a truck. 
drive 450 miles down the Baja Peninsula. You know, when local knowledge got started, it would have been really, really easy for us to be conservative and just do a local San Diego show or a Key West show, something close to home. If it was easy, it probably wouldn't be worth doing because everybody else would be down here. We knew we had to do something a little bit edgy, a little bit risky, uh, show people that we were for real. This is what you want, Rusty? Yes! That is definitely why I came down here. There's nothing else like it. Look at that. That's my first broom tail. That's probably the most satisfying fish of the trip. I knew the adventure along the way, the awesome people, the epic fishing. You couldn't have a better setting to kick off a brand new show. The travel down here was unbelievable. Just the trial and tribulation. I mean, the flat tires, getting run off the road by a truck staying at some of the little towns and the hotels. And just seeing all that for me was really surreal. For me personally, I was able to share my passion for Baja and these people and just the craziness that goes on down here with the entire crew. And it really was the catalyst that sort of kicked off the show and, and brought us together too. I mean, every single one of our crew thinks about this place with only the fondest of memories. Anyway, you fish like this in 20 feet of water. Thank you, Julio. This place is for the future. Oh, with release, with awesome, release, man. with release. Figuring out the tackle for a trip like this is always a challenge. I feel like you kind of get a second chance now to yeah. come back a little more geared up, uh, beef it up a little bit. I know what I'm getting into. I forget how strong these fish are. I forget how hard you have to gear up. I'm not a light tackle fisherman by any means, but I'm also not a guy who's gonna put a 50 wide in a rod holder and send it down. We got everything from Estero gear to grouper gear, wahoo gear, and then I'm really excited to try these. Those and awesome. I'm so glad you brought these for me so I could take them home. I knew that the gear I wanted to use was not gonna be the heavy international stuff. It will absolutely work. You probably will land more fish, but we're not here commercial fishing. We want a fair fight. And in this case, the new Fathom 260 and the Penn Torque 60 were the weapons of choice. The tackles changed a lot too since we were here the last time. I mean, oh, seven, in seven years, just think about how far tackles got. I mean, Penn with these new with these new Fathom 60s. I mean, what a great bottom fishing reel. That oversized handle, the gearing, everything about it. It's light. I'm always sort of walking that fine line between it being sporty and still being able to wrestle these fish out. Yeah, let's load up and go. Turn the, uh, they're on. They're on, I and you them. you turn this key here. Yep. So I mean, push on the on parallel the, to start them. Anytime you're planning a trip like this, you got to have that guy, the finder, the guy who knows where to get everything, all the logistics, the countryside. Julio is that guy. We're down here fishing in a very remote place in a very big boat. And problem number one and problem 17 are always the same. Getting the boat in and out of the water without getting stuck. So our first day fishing didn't exactly go smooth from the get-go. Oh. Uh, you want to talk about a sketchy situation. Here, we sunk the boat, truck, and trailer at the boat ramp. Rush, did you try trimming them up a good bit to give it some lift? I was doing both, up and down. Because you are down, you are deep there. You can, you can put them down. All right, they're down all the way. So now we got a huge problem. The boat is stuck in the water, attached to the truck. Good times. Come, we need to, we need to see if we can push a little oh. bit here. You know, Julio is definitely a Mexican. And when I say that, he can do anything down here. Let's try it. He does, he enjoys the adventure of it. He enjoys shifting gears on the fly. He enjoys putting together something that's not everybody can pull off. I mean, I'm asking the Cooperativa for a tractor to pull the truck out. I mean, we're in the middle of nowhere fishing out of a 34 foot CV that we launched in the surf, got stuck a few times. And I mean, there's just not that many people that can make that come together. You get stuck in the sand with the truck, pick up the phone. Oh, here comes a tractor from the Cooperativa.
Yeah, just slowly. You see them all right there? But you're going to have to cheat to the right because the tide's going to take the bow. You're already a little too... This place is known for a lot of things, but the big species, the big target here is grouper. Forward? Yep. Forward more. I see them. They're in a line. They're not... Not at all. They're up. right here. Go to this way. And there's a couple reasons for that. The main reason is they take such good care of the resource here. It's all catch and release. And I can't think of another place in the world where you're gonna go and it's catch and release grouper fishing. Those are little guys. Back up. The species that we have here, which are, you know, we have many species, but uh, the one that we look for are the groupers. And many of those are very challenging. Oh, you still got pretty good. He got him pretty good. Oh, snap. It's jack smell. They'll eat the hell out of these. You must be uh, at the right time, at the right moment, with the right tackle, and you need to put um, all your skills, everything you know about fishing, to catch one of those, to land one of a, a monster. So that's what I love about Baja. Let's try a couple different rigs here, Rush. I got a little shorter leader. You got a little longer leader. See you know, what works. See what works. I'm I'm probably confident in both. I think shorter leader, you got a better chance of pulling out of the rocks. Longer leader, you know, you get wrapped up, you got a little bit more to play with. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people think of grouper fishing, maybe outside of Florida, you're thinking 100, 200, 300 feet deep. We're fishing out here in 30 feet of water. Hey, Rush. Yes, sir. Stay in the boat, okay? Stay in the boat? Yeah. I'll try not to fall out. Okay. Please. Have you lost somebody recently? You know what? A couple of guys went to the water, you know, with a with a bend rod. So there is not a lot of margin for error when you're fishing that shallow. When you get bit, there's a super fine line between letting that fish eat and letting him get back into his living room way up underneath the rock. Would you get a weak bite? I felt a little bop bop. Looks better. I felt a little pop there. Let me check my bait. Looks way better right here. And that's the real challenge. These fish are big, they're mean, and you have to wrestle them out of the rocks and earn every single fish you get to the boat. You got it. <laughs> oh, get him, Rutch. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. We got to go help. We got to move up and lead her. A guy like me who knows grouper fishing to see these fish in shallow water like this, you're talking about. 20 to 100 pound groupers in 35 foot of water. Oh, 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 oh. Bop, 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 bop. You never even turn the handle. Now we always refer to grouper as freight trains, but you've never felt a freight train like that until you've tried to stop one in 35 foot of water from going into a rock. <laughs> you know, here the problem is not locating the fish. There's fish everywhere. We sent our diver down on a half a dozen spots and every time he comes up seeing a ton of fish. The challenge here is to find fish where you can actually catch them. Oh, oh. Ah! I'd go up to 200. They don't have coral heads and all the stuff you deal with in Florida but what they do have is a very rocky very craggly hard bottom. I mean, catching grouper is already enough of a challenge. You throw in the bottom that's here, the shallow water, it is the ultimate challenge when it comes to bottom fishing. Get him, get him, up, 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 up. get him. Get him. Uh, him. You wanna grab this guy for me? Yeah. Like kind. Right oh, nice here. one too. Golfy? Looks like a golf. No, no, this is a broomtail. Oh, Rutch is bit. Oh, oh that's really a good that. one. I hear that. <laughs> Get him, Rush. There's two main target species on the inshore reefs right over my shoulder here, and they're both groupers. It's a gulf grouper, which is the biggest grouper that lives in Mexico in this region, can get up to 300 pounds. And then the other species is the broomtail grouper. Look at that fish, Julio. That's nice a good one, one Rachi. <laughs> Love bit this fish, Julio. Yeah. 
Look yeah. at the forehead on that dude. <laughs> Woo! Both of them are badass fish. They are both co-kings of the reef and catching them never gets old for me and Rush. Look at that. That is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Double. Dobleta. Look at that. Thank you, Julio. Julio. You're welcome. That's Let's go and get the big for. ones. I can't tell you how happy that makes me, Julio. Is that right? Julio, what do you think? Tide influences these fish? <laughs> yeah. Of course, like, you know, like it's all, all this, fish, all groupers. that's one thing about grouper fishing. It's like any other fishing. It's current dependent. Oh, 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 oh. that felt good. At home, we're looking for tuna on a slack tide because they push the bait up. Here, it's the opposite. It's more like yellowtail fishing. These fish just go into lazy mode when there's no current. And then when the current picks up and it's at the right speed, it just goes nuts. Oh, dude. Ooh. Big oh, one! I just missed one. Woo -hoo. Big one! Get him right. <laughs> oh, I just missed one. Yeah. No, not not that big. Not big. But it's a nice one. I mean, it's just that shallow water. Second. He's down there. Yeah. It's just that fine line between letting them get you in the rocks and popping them off, you know? Julio, you like circles or J's? Circles. Yeah. All the time. It's Easy to release. Fish. Beautiful color, Cookie right? Powder. This golden I mean, color from this beauty. So awesome. The color under the jaw, that yeah. gold is so rad. Such a game of cat and mouse. You feel that bait get nervous, you feel that bait get nervous. And then it's just like the right amount of pressure. Whether you're gonna pop them off or there we go. Woo! <laughs> nice. You didn't know he was free. Nice. Good job, Julio. You're welcome. You're fishing primarily this trip, 35 foot of water to 40 foot of water was about the deepest we got. Oh, oi, oi, oi. Get him, Ross. Woohoo! There you go. <sighs> Guess that was a good bait. Now, that's very shallow for grouper fishing, uh, especially grouper of this size. Nice. Oh. <laughs> 20 pounds. I know, and look. <laughs> like, it's just shallow. The power right at first. Yeah. You have 40 foot of water with rock piles down there. They're living around these rock piles because all the baits congregating around all this relief and they're hanging in the ledges, the cracks, the holes, just like grouper do. Oh, look at that one, look at that one, Ali. Get him. Stop him. I'm trying. And the rod on the rail. Stop him, please. I got it, I got it. Oh. Yeah, that one stopped, don't you? Yeah, he stopped. Oh my God. Better one. The power is amazing. Oh. There you go. Amazing. That guy's That's half, nice he pulled half as hard as the last one I lost. If you want to see some of the best grouper fishing you'll ever see in the world, and you have the logistics to get down here. If you can find this place on a map, this is the spot. So much fun. So much fun, man. One of the most challenging fish on earth to catch. It really is. Oh, that's a good one. That's a 40 pound. Thank you, buddy. This guy ate a bait that was so small, it's crazy. Smoked it. Smoked it. So sick. Man, it's been a great couple of days here in Baja. I can't wait to see what we do next. All right, Julio, I'm gonna let this guy go. Yeah, uh-huh, please. What an awesome fish, man. Thank you so much. Whoa. I think he's healthy. 